Introducing celebrity chef Eric Levine. Chef Eric, how long have you been in the food industry? I've actually been in the industry since I'm 11 years old. I started out as a dishwasher for two days. Second day, the chef walked out. Owner said, I need you to jump on the fry station. And from there, it's history. How long have you been aware of food citizenship and how do you practice it? Well, I've been aware of food citizenship for quite a while. And, and we do a lot of that at both the restaurants. So sustainability, local, uh, we always try to make sure that we, we pull in from all areas of New Jersey, so our produce, uh, our flour for our pasta, our meats and fish, as local as we can. It's an important part to, one, to give back to the local, two, to make things as close and as fresh as we can. So I have a great relationship with a lot of local farmers, and that's, a, that's an important thing to me, because it's helping the local farmer, and I think that's important. Instead of importing something from South America at the wrong time of year, just because it's, you, know, you can get it cheaper, yeah, our core value is, is really working close with those people. What are some of the bad food citizenship practices that are still prevalent today? There's a tremendous amount of bad practices that go on. Uh, lack of utilization of products, a lot of waste, where we'll work with an organization like Community Food Bank. So if it's a product that we will not serve in the restaurant, not because it's you know, gone or bad, but because it wouldn't hit the level of standard of which we're serving, we give it to the Community Food Bank in New Jersey because it feeds people who are in, who are in need, people who are hungry, and we don't waste anything. 100% uh, utilization, and if we can't, we give it to the proper charities, we give it to the proper organizations rather than dumping it in the garbage. And, and there's obviously legal ramifications if a product spoils, but we're very you know, aware of that. We, has, we have HACCP program within the restaurant, so everything is time temperatured, uh, it's dated and labeled, so it's very organized and very thorough, and we track it. We try to pull the garbage can out of the kitchen, and we put a, what's called a bus tub on the table, so when our cooks are prepping, they can't throw it in the garbage and hide it. If it goes in the bucket, that means it's utilized. So we're utilizing everything from you know, tail to snout. What would you encourage people to do to become better food citizens? I would definitely encourage people to use everything. Uh, if you go to a farmer's market and you see a tomato that may be twisted and distorted, so to speak, use it. There's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't look perfect and pretty and all you know, shaped like you want to see it. And people have to get that out of their minds where they look at a zucchini and they may have a little blemish on it. It's okay. You know, don't waste it because if you don't buy it, it's going to go somewhere. And you want to use everything that's available to you. It still tastes the same way. And I think that's a way to go, you know, and really encouraging people to try to, to not worry about what's perfect. If it's twisted on the outside, it's a tomato. Really playing around with food and, and looking at what's local um, and not being afraid of the ugly food. Ugly food, if you've never had it, is really good. Oh geez, did you see how many retweets did I get? What? I have more than you. Wow, those guys at St. Joe's University sure saved us. And they're also saving the world. Sharing a little love can make the world so much more sustainable. Yes it can, Moldina. Hashtag embrace ugly. Keep it going. Spread the word. <laughs> what are some of the bad food citizenship? Oh my god. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I, I'm a living pooper <laughs> real. <laughs> <laughs>